Hi everybody, my name is April and we are back with Wild Side Wednesdays. This week our topic is the sea turtle. And today I brought along my little friend um, and we're going to start with the Hawaiian term for sea turtle and that is honu. H-O-N-U. Now all across the world we have seven species of sea turtles. Here in Hawaii we most likely are going to see two of those, while others sometimes do come in, two are more common than others. Um, and that is the hawksbill sea turtle and our most common, the green sea turtle. Um, but today, we're only going to really focus on those green sea turtles. The first thing we're going to focus on is how do they get their names? Why are they called the green sea turtle? Uh, well, that is actually because of their diets. They eat mostly green things as they do get older. Um, they go from an omnivore to primarily an herbivore as they turn into adults. All of the sea grasses and seaweeds that they eat will actually turn a layer of fat that's underneath their shell a very green color. Um, the outsides of their body, that shell, is still very much brown like this. Uh, the turtle behind me is a false representation and it is mostly green. All right, so this next topic is going to be the anatomy of our turtles. Um, first, we're going to talk about the top of it. Uh, this is called the carapace, and a lot of you have probably seen those nice little scale-like structures. Those are actually called scutes, and they usually look like little diamonds or hexagons all across their body. And that's actually different from species to species, that pattern of those. If we flip our turtle over, the bottom is actually called the plastron. We have our lovely flippers, the two front ones that are good for pulling through that water, and then we have those two back ones as well. And turtles, their mouths we actually call a beak. It does actually kind of look like a beak of a bird. And rather than having teeth, they have more of a serrated jawline. Um, to me, it kind of looks like razors. And then finally, we have our little tails. Um, each gender is a little different when it comes to those tails. Uh, when we're out there in the water, if we see a turtle that has a really long, thick tail, it could extend to the length of its back flippers, um, maybe even longer. That is going to be a male sea turtle. That is going to be a mature male. Now, if the turtle has a short little nubby tail, looks like a little triangle is how I describe it, um, there's two options. More than likely it could be a female, but if it's one of our smaller ones, it's going to be any of our immature turtles. They're not yet sexually mature, so we can't quite identify if they're male or females yet. Alright, so this next topic is going to be the life cycle. We're going to start with the hatchling all the way up until when they're ready to breed and lay their eggs. So. First, we're going to start with that hatchling. Uh, when they're in their egg, in their nest, that little hatchling is actually going to use what we call a caruncle or an egg tooth, which is really close to like where their nose or their mouth would be. And they're actually just going to use it and chip away at that shell so they can break free. And then they're going to dig their way up through that sand and scurry off into the water. Now, once they're out there in that water, they're just going to be wandering around in that ocean uh, trying to, you know, figure out life, what are they going to eat, and ultimately trying to take care of themselves because they are very, very vulnerable at this point in life. Uh, they have lots of predators through that time period when they're super tiny. Um, the first seven to eight years of their life, guys, they are just roaming around out there in that water, and it's called the lost years. When it is time for them to turn back in, go to those near shore areas again, into their foraging grounds, they are about sub-adults. They're not full-grown mature adults yet. And when they're there, they're going to start eating lots of that seaweed again, or as we say, limu. When these sea turtles are about 25 to 30 years old, that is when they are getting close to about their breeding age, when they're getting mature enough for that. And when it is time for them to breed, they are going to travel 
to their nesting grounds or natal homing where they actually hatched. That's what these females will do. And she's going to lay anywhere between 100 and 110 eggs when she's there. And I'll get more onto that process here in just a moment. Um, but in between those breeding seasons, they're going to hang out in those foraging grounds, guys. The females are going to want to breed about every two to four years, where those males are going to be wanting to breed about every year, every two years. Now, back to how the whole nesting process works. The female is going to go up to that beach, and she's going to drag herself up out of the ocean, up onto that beach. She could lurk for one location to lay that nest a couple of times before she finds the perfect one. And when she gets there, she's going to turn her body around, and she's going to start using her hind flippers, these little guys right back here. She's going to use those to start digging her nest, or egg chamber. It's going to be a nice deep hole where she can drop those eggs down. Uh, these little guys are only about the size of a golf ball, and they have about a leathery, rubbery texture. And there's a little dimple in each of those eggs that gives it enough space for that fluid to expand if needed. Um, so that's how she lays those eggs. All right, so now for some behaviors. It's good that you know what those are. Um, the first one is kind of like a swatting of its flipper towards its face. Um, that means it's irritated. It doesn't want you know you to be near it or it's just had a bad day. It's hard to tell. Uh, sometimes it kind of looks like they're biting their shoulder or they're yawning. That is a very territorial behavior. Now, if you're ready to figure out how do you know if a turtle is just downright comfortable. Um, when a turtle has its flippers just spread out and it kind of looks like it's in a daze, well, that turtle is a happy little camper. Um, he's super chill, super relaxed when he's just floating right there. Um, now, our turtles, we will see them from time to time at a cleaning station. Uh, we have cleaning stations all across the islands. And this is just where they hang out, they're resting, and they're letting other fish come by and eat the algae and parasites off their shells. And another thing that we'll see is them actually scratching their bodies. It's totally normal. We'll see them swim on up to the corals at the ledge and just start like rubbing their little backs on it. Um, we also have basking. Uh, whether they just be up on the surface floating or even on the beaches. Here in Hawaii, we do see our green sea turtles up on the beaches basking, and this is how they're warming up their bodies or just simply resting. They're using that heat of the sun. Uh, we will see them breathing. They'll come up to the surface, take a big gasp of air, and then we'll see them slowly go back down. Um, sometimes you'll even see them burp. They come up and you, they're taking that little breath, but then you kind of start to smell that seaweed as well. So we have turtle burps from time to time also. All right, so our next topic, guys, is actually the protection of our turtles as well as the threats that they may face. Now, the sea turtles here in Hawaii, our greens are both state and federally protected. So if ever you see somebody out there doing harm to them, just a reminder, they are very much protected. Now you're probably wondering what kind of threats do they face? Um, one, we have the bycatch. We have just fisheries in general, whether it be the hooks, whether it be the fishing line, boats that are zooming by. Now, any of these commercial fishing boats that we might see out at sea, those large vessels, um, we have what we call as a turtle excluder device, and essentially on those big nets they use, there should be a little door or escape route on each of those, and that is just simply as that turtle might come into that net, it can swim down and escape out that little hole to where it does not become part of bycatch. Um, tiger sharks could go after the sea turtles. Uh, disease is one thing. The most common thing is fibropapillomas. Um, essentially, it is different tumors that come across their bodies. 
Uh, sometimes you can have tumors on their eyes, on their throats, on their flippers. Sometimes those tumors are totally okay. Uh, it's just when those tumors start to spread and get to the more vital areas that it can cause a lot of damage. We've also got, I mean, tourism. And then even coastal developments causing an issue, guys. And then the other is global warming. Uh, whether there's reef damage, there's temperature changes, various things are causing um, changes for these sea turtles. Now, there is a way for you guys that you could help. Um, one, if you ever see a turtle that is in danger, please call the appropriate authorities so they can come and take care of them. Um, the other thing is, if you're ever swimming in the water, guys, please make sure to keep a good distance away from them. We like to say stay about two human lengths away from them and the turtle comes closer. Just kind of slowly back away. No need to get right up next to them. When it comes to those hatchlings, um, on the beaches during nesting season, everybody is encouraged to, one, turn off the lights of your hotels or homes um, early because that light is going to affect the mom that's coming up to lay those eggs as well as the hatchlings when they do hatch and they're trying to make their way back to the sea. Um, any holes that you might have dug on the sand, please fill those in. Uh, we don't want to leave any kind of holes for one of those turtles to fall in and get stuck. And then if you're walking along the beach looking for shells at night or just enjoying a night out walking out there, um, instead of using a flashlight with a white light, please use a flashlight with a red light. Um, that way they're not tracking that little white light that's going across the sand. Um, now, the other thing is please don't feed them. Um, if you see plastic out there or any kind of rubbish, please pick it up. Um, if you're out there fishing, by all means, guys, if you drop a fishing line or a hook, try your best to retrieve it. Um, it's just one less thing out there in the water. So those are just some simple things to remember about those sea turtles. All right, guys, it is time for our question and answer time. Um, now, we're going to have these questions read to us from the opposite side of this camera by one of our volunteers, Kalekoa. And yeah, let's do this. Nicole from Wahoo asks, do turtles mate for life or do they have multiple partners? All right, so these turtles can actually have multiple partners. Um, one female can mate with multiple males. When she does lay those eggs and they hatch, uh, that clutch of eggs could have hatchlings from multiple males. So one mom, multiple dads from that little group of eggs, and it's totally normal out there. Hallie from Arizona asks, do they have ears? All right, Hadley, very good question um, because to the average person, it looks like a turtle does not have ears, but it really does. Um, they have ears that are not noticeable from the outside. They are actually covered by a protective layer called the tympanum. And because their skulls are so thick, they actually have very poor hearing. Um, they can hear very low frequencies very well. But when it comes to those high frequency sounds, they cannot hear them. However, when they are in the water, they can hear vibrations. So they can hear the boats and anybody kind of coming up next to them. Daphne from Alabama asks, what is your favorite or weirdest fact about sea turtles? I'd have to say that my favorite fact about sea turtles is actually how their genders come to be. Um, it's not a genetic thing like us as humans necessarily, um, but more of a temperature dependency. Um, like reptiles, because they are reptiles, um, when it comes to those eggs in the nest, the temperature of that sand is going to depend if it's male or female. The hotter that temperature is, you are more likely to get more females than males. The cooler the temperature, you are going to get more males than females. Now, if you hit that pivotal temperature, that perfect one, you can get an equal ratio of male to female sea turtles coming out of that nest. Booper from Illinois asks, how big is it? How big are turtles? 
All right, Cooper. So turtles can weigh about 250 pounds on average. Some sea turtles can get up to about 400 pounds. As far as their length, um, about 32 to 40 inches is a pretty good average length for a sea turtle. And lastly, Seth from Illinois asks, does it hide in its shell? Very, very common question. All right, Seth. So sea turtles actually do not hide in their shells. Um, instead, they still hang outside. It's not like other turtles that we see in ponds or anywhere on land. They cannot bring their flippers or their head inside their shell. Um, another comparison is that they can't walk on land the same as other turtles can. So their bodies are always out, um, which leaves them very unprotected at times. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out with us. Um, and keep in touch for next week. We have another topic coming up. Bye, guys.